Welcome back to Spitball and Cards. In today's video, we're talking about Otani 50-50 set, what our thoughts are, how they've evolved since we've seen you know releases from tops around this product. So in this episode, you have me, Scott, we have Phil, Jeff, and Ty. For those that don't know what this Otani set is, let me actually show you what this looks like really quick. So essentially what it is, it's a product and it has some of the most high-end Otani baseball cards ever made. It's the actual uh, logo man from the pants he wore when he had the 50 home run a uh, game where he broke that record for 50 home run 50 stolen bases he went like what four five for five or six for six with three home runs is that what it was in 10 rbi so very historic pair of pants and that logo man is going to be in those cards with an autograph so the set is unique because it has 50 base cards of him hitting and 50 base cards of him stealing bases so the 50 home runs the 50 stolen bases it's it's a highlighting all of those so all Otani, it's a unique set. What are our thoughts on it? What do you think, Jeff? What do you think about this product? I'm not surprised, of course. Uh, Tops has been printing money off Otani's back the last few weeks. If you remember his, uh, his was it his 50-50 that sold $6.3 million worth? Uh, yes. So it's, uh, the, it's not surprising that they made it its own set. When they announced the Tops Dynasty Black a few days ago, that they said was going to be uh, not a standalone product, but was going to be inserted in product closest to when the event occurred. It was going to be something from a specific game, a, a big either patch or relic from a specific game, and it was going to be released in the product that came out as soon after the event as possible, which I thought was a great idea, but I was kind of hoping that something like this would mean it was in Tops Update or some other... Uh, maybe low end set that somebody could pull a huge card out of. So I was a little bit disappointed to find out yesterday in their release that these tops dynasty blacks are in fact going in the 50 50. Uh, so I, I'm, I don't know. I'm not mad at it. That's probably going to sell a lot. I think it goes on sale right about at the time of recording. So we'll see if it sells out and what it goes for in the secondary market. Yeah. Great point. I made a video on this, yesterday on saturday released it sunday today's monday when we're recording and based off of the way they worded it it sounded very similar to the ricky debut patches and the uh hidden gems short prints that were across different sets so that was my hope too jeff and i talk about that i am underwhelmed with this to be fully transparent and the way this is set up i'm not a huge fan i know their goal was to make it cheap they're retailing for 25 dollars a pack 10 pack boxes are 240 bucks, but like a majority of kids still aren't going to get this at release on tops.com at noon on a Monday to really have everybody have the full opportunity that tops is hoping for. So like, it's good. It's cheap and there's an opportunity for everybody, but they're just printing money. This is just a tops now extension. It kind of feels like, mm -hmm. and it's not a product you can buy in the store. And these are all going to be way more expensive once it sells out. So I am not as thrilled as I once was. What do you think, Phil? Well, I think uh, right now, or for the last few months, I think Fanatics has been commending Tops for coming up with Tops now before they purchase them. Because <laughs> one of their objectives as a company is to capitalize off buzz, right? And that's what they've been doing. And a lot of times they have to create buzz, Taco Fractor, et cetera. But capitalizing off organic buzz or news is just so much easier. And Otani is the gift that just keeps on giving. So this is the cost of a player being awesome. He's going to have to spread that wealth with others. He's going to have to make other people rich, whether it's signing autographs for kids or Tops Now, Fanatics Now, whatever this ends up becoming. But yeah, Fanatics is really blowing this out of the water. Um, honestly, it seems kind of cool, uh, but uh, so does in everything. And I think your answer to, well, kids can't get in on this. I think we are the kids of the hobby, and I think they're targeting us and maybe not the kids themselves. That's fair. It's just the way they worded it when they announced it. It was like, everybody has an opportunity. And it's like, well, not really, but it's an online release. Not everybody has an opportunity. I guess my question is, we all believe, Ty, I'll get to you in just a moment, but we all know and believe that the Logo Man Dynasty Black is cool. I think we agree that they pulled a game used card from a huge game. That's cool. I think we're all in agreement. I have a hard time being excited about pulling a Super Fractor out of this set when there's a hundred Otani super fractors in one set, because there's a super fractor of every single Otani card in the set. Like, I don't know how this is going to have as much value as a regular super fractor. Maybe someone wants to go for the whole run, but like, 
we've seen, I think, was it Fleer back in the late 50s, early 60s? He did this with Ted Williams, and nobody cares about those cards at all when they released a Ted Williams only set back in the day. Like, we've seen this happen before as well with other products and sets, and they just they don't do anything for me. What do you think, Ty? There's a lot here. That, so, what's interesting is this: these are not Tops Now cards, right? These They're not. Just, it's basically the same concept, yeah. right? It's not Tops so, Now. So, but that's that's sort of new. The turnaround time here is really new in terms of like this isn't a Tops Now print to demand. This is some product that they presumably had like in the hopper waiting. So, part of me wonders like, what if he hadn't hit the milestone? Like, what if what if he just hadn't hit it? I don't know how much legwork we always hear that they can't do X, Y, Z for a lot of these product releases because, you know, they have to, um, you know, basically Plan. have all this, all this lead time and runway to like, make sure the products are, are still that way. Like, uh, so that's kind of, um, that's kind of confusing. Like when I looked at the top up, tops update checklist, there are still a lot of players who are on that checklist in their pre-trade deadline jerseys and with their teams. So they were able to like prioritize this and push it through the hopper and with the manufacturing facility really quickly. So that's sort of interesting to me as like a new twist above and beyond the print to demand tops. Now, now we're seeing these like special product releases come out. It takes advantage of the insane FOMO and the hype wave for players when they're, when they're hot, which I think, you know, many people at the end of the day, they want that. Like many consumers, I do think want that. Maybe not everybody watching this podcast, maybe not all of us want that, but if you just take everybody in the hobby, everybody who's buying baseball cards regularly, there's just like a collective of of people who want this. There is a demand for this type of stuff that comes out and feeds that like hype energy during those cycles. I don't know if we know for sure that there are a hundred super fractors from this product. They haven't really given us all the details for something um, that releases in 10 minutes while we're recording this video. Uh, to the public. So that's that's going to be really interesting to see. Um, I just recently kind of railed on Panini for releasing like their last five big products without having checklists public to the uh, available to the public, including their National Treasures football product, which came out and just had no checklist, but they did a Dutch auction on it. Uh, there's two more Tops uh, Dynasty black cards yet to be revealed as well as part of this checklist. So it's not just the one from his pants. There's two more that they're promising are going to be in this product. So the chase is there, I think much more so than the tops now on demand cards, um, whether it's the Otani or the, you know, the triple Olympic card or any of the others. But like, I, I almost get depressed at the idea of like all these Otani cards basically being viewed as trash, like the base cards, you know, maybe you pull an Otani, if you pull an Otani this year out of tops Chrome, you're getting a buyback. So that's interesting. Uh, in this case, you're gonna have all these breakers and other people presumably ripping this product, stacks on stacks of these like commemorative Otani cards just going into the trash bin and not into you know any collector's hands. So I don't I don't love this as a concept. Um, this is very different for me to the Wemby high-end product that came out, uh, especially with how few autographs and other cards he has in his rookie year. But um, there's people are gonna be eating this up and chasing these big hits. There's no way. That. Um, so I want to talk about the set a little bit more in depth and show what it looks like again. So this was tops release key chase cards include parallels, relics and autographs. So I'm going to assume, and of course the ultimate chase, the three unique one of one dynasty black game, one relic autograph cards. So there's going to be a lot more Otani autographs and relics in this product. Okay. I'm assuming the relics are going to be of that same pair of pants. are probably going to use every bit of it in this set, which is going to be cool. If you pull that, like that's going to be cool as well because it's still a piece of history, that jersey. And those should go for a good amount of money. But um, here's an example. This is the 50th home run card. So you can see home run number 50. And then we have down here, this is stolen base number one. So they're all imagery of the event. So for set collectors, it could be cool. Um, so so Scott, that, I see that's a red out of five. And the, the first picture looked like a super fractor. It was. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's it's going to be basically tops chrome. So the base cards, yeah. from my understanding, are not chromium. I'm, from my understanding, they're paper and the parallels are chromium. Right. So I wonder how many paper or how many parallels there's going to be. So we got a super and a red. Are they going to are we going to get red wave and maybe? All I hope if they kept it to the true colors, let's say blue, gold, red, orange, and super, that'd be cool. That'd I be bet fun. the blues would look great. A lot the of blues these. would look cool. They can't not do the blue. But yeah. So. 
that's basically what it is. And these are the two cards that aren't announced yet. Like we can kind of guess. This looks like a Dodgers patch. There's like blue and there'd be his autograph. This is interesting. There's a little bar yeah. in the middle. So it looks like there's like two cool. players. Maybe yeah. it's Otani with autographs on both sides as a hitter and a pitcher. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. it might like, be something from his game when he's – well, he did he hit his 50th stolen base the game before that? Yeah, he was he was over fifty. He was over fifty, and it was more than the game before that. But maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Like a piece yeah. of meat. So these are those black dynasty cards. So um, overall, I think we all like this set. I don't like parts of it. I don't like the the aspect of only Otani in the set. And there's lots of parallels of every single moment. I don't know. I don't love that, but I love this. I think this is really cool and a great step that Tops has done. Anyone disagree? I was just, I'm like, I keep thinking it through this, like the supply, the overall supply dynamic with new stuff being produced. And here's maybe a question I would pose to you guys. Like on the one hand, I think we would all look at this and say, oh, this, this just like devalues everything across the board, potentially with Otani. This doesn't devalue his Bowman Chrome rookie autos and things like that at all. But like, as at, when you go from years two to 20 for a player, and you just keep adding new and new and new super fractors and things like this and just diluting the pool. On the one hand, I would be concerned if I'm if I own early, if I own an Allen and Ginter Chrome super fractor of Otani or something like that that I paid, you know, a couple thousand dollars for early in his career. But then by the end of the, his career, he's got fifty thousand super fractors on the market or something crazy that potentially devalues it. So that to me like seems like a bad thing. But at the same time. Is this potentially cool if it makes getting a Shohei Otani Super Fractor, albeit less special, more accessible for more people? Like where more people can say, I, I just, even if it's not a you know flagship brand or like a high-end card, somebody who maybe only ever dabbles in cards up to $1,000 or something, up to $500 says, this is kind of cool. I was able to get a Shohei Otani Super Fractor. I was able to get a one of one because there's 50,000 of them. I, I, I don't know. I'm like trying to look at it through both both lenses it's like you think about high-end markets for any athlete whether it's griffey jordan anybody it's like near impossible to get any kind of a cool card for any of them because they're just too expensive it's cost prohibitive so i agree with you i think it's a good lens to look through i sometimes to a fault go to the side of there's too much in the future there's not going to be value like i i sometimes to a fault go that way and i know that but i do think for what fanatics is trying to do and grow their brand and grow the hobby introducing easier to hit stuff helps that but in the long run it still concerns me but i actually totally get what you're saying yeah that i mean looking at it both ways um it's not i, I don't know if predatory is the right word because the thing drops in like five minutes and i don't know if we know pack, pack odds so even though this isn't printed to demand and there are serial numbers there probably will be pack odds we'll probably know how many are printed um, one of the things that's, that's nice about top slash fanatics versus Panini is they can't play the game of like, look, this is a fixed product and actually printed to demand, but you don't know, you know what they did till after the fact, because they hid the pack odds. You know what I mean? So consumers don't really know what they're getting in the chance they have at this point of getting one of those parallels or one of those like insane hits, but at least it's a fixed print versus other tops now products where I feel like you're getting into it and like 50, 50, that was insane. Like I bet. 90% of those that purchase the 50-50 on-demand cards from Tops Now wish they hadn't based on yeah. what was the print run on that? 600,000 plus. We were making a big deal out of Project 2020 when the Keith Shore Griffey was just over 100,000. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that was insane. I know people that bought like 20 packs of those things, maybe more. Yeah. But this 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 was really for the lottery ticket, right? The Otani, the True. Tops Now. I think a lot of people thought, well, for $11, I can have a chance at getting that 50 50 auto that's a conversation we should have are we just having lottery tickets at this point like i know this set has other stuff but obviously we're buying for the dynasty black like we, if that wasn't in there this set would not be as popular mm -hmm. i think we all can agree if there was no dynasty black one of one like are we just buying lottery tickets and is fanatics just printing lottery tickets and not printing unlimited money literally they're maybe paying otani what a thousand bucks an autograph if they're being generous maybe more Say ten thousand. Well, great. We just made six million dollars for that one of one auto. So it's just, I don't know. It's, it's kind of hand. As, as for people that aren't yet in the hobby, this is a cool enough concept for people to have heard about after the fact 
to be interested in the hobby. I feel like if you hear about like, oh, they had 50 50 in each like, you know, moment stolen base or home run was recognized through a card's image. And there was like clear association there. And then you had a chance to pull that one on one, even if they hadn't bought into it. I have a feeling that this is going to be a, a huge success, you know, hey, given and, uh, that it's not just about long term viability of those cards. Monetary success or like a hobby success? Which one, Phil? Massive fanatic success. Hobby yeah, success. That's our one to find. What do you think about consumers? Is it going to be a success for them in the long run? Or? Oh, they're going to absolutely kill it, man. Everybody's going to make money on this. <laughs> I just can't wait for the 50-50 update set when they get like the, the four home runs beyond 50 and the nine stolen bases. So that update set's probably going to come out in about a month or something. Yeah. Do you guys remember the tops moments and milestone set? No. This was the tops moment and milestone set. It's basically what this is from 2008. I'll share my screen. So a lot of these players. So here is the Ryan Howard, 95 home runs, one of one. When he had his career, 95 home runs. And I believe he had like career 99 home runs and career 100 home run, one of ones. It was just, there was a lot of 81 hits for Joe Maurer. It's like, what, what is this? That's kind of what this reminds me of. And you can see the value in it quite as strong, right? Because there's 144 hits. I'm assuming there's a hit for every single one. I could be wrong. So if I butchered that, I apologize. But I think these moments and milestones are literally taking all of the hits that Mauer had. So it's one of those things where they've done this before and this isn't very valuable. It's like antithetical to baseball, which is all about milestones. Like, it, it, you know, we were joking on the on the road to 50-50, that every every day that Otani either stole a base or hit a home run, we were hearing first player ever to 43, 43, 44, 44, you know. Yes, then, I got four yeah. boxes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I really just did. But, I, I can't even log in. I'm on the website. Even top stock oh, won't, won't let me log in. Like the website literally won't load. So Phil's bot is better than mine, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, um, I don't even remember what I was saying at this point, except yeah. uh, except that uh, milestones matter. Like when you get four boxes of 50-50, it matters. Yeah, uh, so when are we going to get the game-used uh, Filmington sweatshirt patch from when he when he got his four boxes? <laughs> Cut it up and put it in the RC explosion. Odd used, right? Yeah, their website, yeah, their website won't even like load at all for me. Like in any, uh, They're making so much money. But anyway, okay. so overall... Let's rate this, each of us individually, give it our thoughts. I think there's pros and cons for each of us, right? We agree. There's good yeah. and bad about this set. Yeah. So, Jeff, scale of 1 to 10, what are you giving this thing? I'm going to give it a 6. A little better than uh, middle of the road because of the chance to get the Dynasty Black, although I'd rather have that in another set. Um, and I do like the fact that as as ty alluded to they're showing that they can have a quicker turnaround on products so i hope that means that they're going to start using that quicker turnaround in some of their mainstream products so it gives us a lot of insight into where their head's at so uh, that's why i'm going with the six okay what do you think ty six exactly the same as what jeff said phil no, no ad a little jeff. biased i guess but i'll go seven <laughs> phil has some stock in the game now so he's this is a 10 everybody buy it phil is already ripped so I think it's, I, I would agree. I think we're all aligned in regards to this. Um, are we going to be opening it, any of us here? No. Oh, man. No chance. Okay. So maybe like that say no, but it sure would be fun. Can you imagine what? pulling that card? Final question. What do you think that Otani logo man goes for? That's why I was going to, yeah. I don't know. I um, think there was, most there was, of us were wrong about the baseball, except for Scott. I, yeah, I was like, hey, I, that was I the one wanna... time I was right here. Come on. I have no I, idea. I, I don't understand this high-end market. I clearly don't understand the memorabilia market outside of cards. So I don't know. It has to be like well, 500 grand, doesn't it? It has to be. Well, it, I mean, I sure hope not, considering his Dynasty 1 of 1 BGS 9 rookie from 2018 sold for 33000 in April. Did it really? Wow, good so, for that buyer. Uh, I oh, did man. see somebody on Instagram was talking about how this is going to be a $10 million card. Did anybody yeah, see that? I that saw movie? that. <laughs> uh, I think it could get to six figures. 
Uh, that might be uh, Michael Rubin's burner account saying uh, 10 million. I think I think Bitcoin reaches 1 million before that card gets to 10 million. <laughs> uh, so, Phil, I, I joined you in buying a couple boxes. I, did you notice that it says it begins shipping 1226? So ah. Not so it's not for the... <laughs> it's they're, tops now. We have a tops now set. They're getting us. They're getting us FOMO. after Christmas. So it's going to be like a next season spring training. Literally during the slowest time of the year for sports for baseball cards. Yeah. So we're going to keep the parallels the same and just print base cards to demand. That's what's going to happen. Oh my yeah. gosh. That's what they're going to do. It is. Oh gonna... no. Yeah. Well, I just bought another four boxes. All right. That changed my grade. <laughs> you, you have eight boxes. Did you get their website. Oh, my God. All right. Now my, now my grade's a 10. Now that I've got two boxes, my grade's a 10. I'm, I'm just over here just doing this over and over and over. Yeah. Again. So so for, for those tuning in, um, try to log on to the TOPS website 10 minutes before the scheduled drop time. And that way, you'll get bumped up ahead of people. Mm -hmm. And you'll get – and then the page will refresh – and you'll get like the regular landing page, like three or four minutes before. And then you find the exact product and then it'll show as being like sold out or not available. Not but that exact product page and then you refresh it and eventually you'll see the available. It's so stupid. That's I think um, maybe Fanatics within the next three years, Fanatics needs to upgrade that Tops website. If they keep doing this, they got to update it. If this is their business model moving forward, they got to update yeah. it. Yeah. You got to do something. Okay. Well, with that being said, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see what happens with this set. We'll probably have more thoughts on it in the future once we know more. But let us know in the comments down below. Do you like this idea? Do you hate this idea? And we will see you in the next video.